Hello everybody, before we get into week 9, I have a points update for you guys. In my hand, I have the scores. And, one team has a total of 18,020 points. And the other team has a total of 17,910 points. So very close, so close. You guys are doing excellent. Remember, keep earning those points for your teams. But the team that has the 18,020 points is the blue team. Congratulations, blue team. You guys pulled ahead. Well done. You guys are doing so great out there. Keep up the good work. See you guys later. Hey everybody, it's Pastor Ken, and tonight is week number nine of up. Week number, boom, nine of up. Only one more week to go after this, so I hope you guys do well in the crafts, in the games, in the worship, in lesson, in your memory verse, in all of that, and hopefully you can wrap up by winning the most points for your team. We're going to miss you guys, but until then, I hope you enjoy week nine of up tonight. We'll see you in a little bit. Hi guys. Today for our craft, we are going to be making something that has to do with the story you're about to hear. Okay. So we have a brown paper bag, which is a sack in our story. We have a little piece of rope and we have some coins and you're gonna need a crayon. So you can use a brown crayon or a black crayon, whichever, and actually any color you want. The reason uh, I chose brown and black is because we're gonna be drawing some grain and we're going to be doing something with these coins, which is pretty cool, okay? So first, what you're going to do is you're going to take your brown sack and you're going to draw some grain. Now grain can just look like grass, right? So in our story, it'll make sense when you hear a story. Why are we drawing grain? What are we doing, right? It's going to make sense on your story. So here's your grain. Pretend like this is grain, okay? Then what I want you to do is take one of your coins and put it inside your sack, okay? And you're going to hold it in place and take your crayon and just rub right over the top. You see how that comes through? Wow, that is pretty neat. Now you can do that as many times as you want, okay? As many coins as you want on the cover of your, your grain bag, you can do that, okay? Whoops, my coin was moving, so you gotta really hold it still. Okay, when you're done making your grain and your coins, you're gonna put your coins in the bag and you're going to take your, your cord, your ribbon here, and you're gonna wrap it around tie it up okay that's so your coins and your grain don't get lost okay so you're gonna learn in our story our text truth is that God used the bad times in Joseph's life to rescue his family I want you to try to learn listen to the story and understand why does this craft make sense right and then talk to your small group leaders about it have fun making your craft. Bye-bye.
So uh, we are back. So our circle is now set up. Noah and I are going to try to push each other out of the circle we set up or if one of us falls down, the other person gets a point. We're going to play to three points. You guys will start outside the circle as you see we are. We will count down three, two, one, and then we will go. Noah, are you ready? Question. Question. What if my straps loosen or possibly fall off? That is a good question. You're going to say, my strap is loose, and then you guys can pause the game, tighten that strap, and then continue outside the circle, count down one more time, and then continue playing. But to keep the game moving quickly, we are on the honor system to grab your leg and keep that firm grip the entire time. Don't yes. let go of your ankle. Don't let go of your ankles. Or hold on to your shoelaces. Correct. Are we ready? I'm ready. We'll go in three, two, one. Sumo! That's one! Yeah! That's one uh, for you. He went out before I fell down, so that's a one point. Go back. For me. <laughs> one to nothing. Should take put my hat on backwards. Right. Here we go. Three, two, one. Sumo. Oh, what? Look at the attack mode. Yeah. Woo! 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 Get back quickly. There we go. We'll say because we're old. First one to two points. First one to two. First one to two. It's tied up. One one. Are you ready? I know I'm ready. There we go. In three, two. One, sumo! Attack, tornado attack! Tornado attack! Ah. <laughs> My legs! <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Yeah, and that's the game! Have fun!
Acts, Romans to Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, and Hebrews, and James, and 1st Peter, 2nd Peter, 1, 2, 3, John, Jude, and Revelation, 1, 2, 3, John, Jude, and Revelation.
everyone, welcome back. I am super excited for tonight's lesson. Before we get into it, there are two questions that I have regarding tonight's lesson. So the questions are this. God will always use what seems like terrible situations for good. He is always in control. And the other one is, we need to always give credit to God for what He has doing in our lives. Not taking credit for ourselves, but giving credit to Him. And we are going to see that in tonight's lesson. We're going to continue looking at the story of Joseph. We will open our time in chapter 41. So we'll be in chapter 41. And that's where we'll, we'll begin. Actually, we're going to begin a little bit before that in verse or in chapter 40. We see Joseph. He is in jail. He's in he's been thrown into jail. He was falsely accused of being unfaithful with someone else's wife. That is a big no-no. But he didn't do it. But he was still accused of that crime. And then he was thrown into jail. While in jail, he came across two other people who used to be part of Pharaoh's, in Pharaoh's little clique. They were um, advisors for him. They were, one was even a cupbearer to the Pharaoh. But he disliked something that they did and got themselves thrown into jail. So while in jail, they have two dreams. They are troubled by these dreams. Joseph is able to interpret them. He's able to uh, tell them what the meanings of these dreams are. Not only what they mean, but what is going to happen. And you know what? That's exactly what happened. What he said is exactly what happened. God was able to use Joseph in this way to let them know what's going on and what's happening. So in our story today, we are going to pick up two years have passed since that has happened. Joseph's been in prison for two whole years. That's a very long time. We're going to pick up our story at the beginning of chapter 41. And this is what it says. Pharaoh had a dream. He was standing by the Nile when out of the river came up seven cows, sleek and fat, and it grazing among the reeds. After them, seven other ugly cows um, came up out of the Nile and stood beside, beside those on the riverbank. And the cows that were ugly and... Uh, Gaunt ate up the seven slick fat cows. So that is a pretty crazy dream. I've had weird dreams before, but nothing quite like that. It goes on. He has not one dream, but he has a second dream. Very similar to, to the first one. And it, these are troubling to him. He doesn't know what to do about it and he is a, he is troubled. In comes Pharaoh's cup uh, cup bearer. He um, goes to them asking them, hey I need, I've had these dreams, they're troubling me, what do they mean? No one is able to tell him what is going on. Just after that the cup bearer remembers this person who he met in jail. He remembers Joseph and the fact that he was able to tell them about the dreams that he had at one point. So Pharaoh calls in at Joseph. They clean him up. He's Remember, he's been in jail. So they clean, clean him up to present him in front of Pharaoh in order to for him to help and ease Pharaoh's mind explaining what these dreams are. So we're going to move down. We're going to be in a lot of different um, uh, chapters today. So if you don't get there in time, it's okay. I will be reading most of them for you. 
So we're going to go down. It's still chapter 41, but we're going to verse 14. And this is what it says. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and he was uh, quickly brought from the, the dungeon. When he had shaved and changed his clothes, he came before Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream, the, and no one can interpret it, but I have heard it said that you, um, that you, when you hear dreams, you can interpret them. He says, I can't do it, Joseph said, but God um, will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. So he doesn't take credit for what is about to happen. He could have easily been like, yeah, I got your back, Pharaoh. I, uh, the, tell me a dream. This is what it means. But he is giving gr credit to where it is due. He's giving credit to God. And we need to remember to do that in our lives as well. How many of you guys know someone who has taken credit for something they didn't do? I know I have. Unfortunately, yes, I have done that before as well. There was a drawing contest in school when I was in elementary school. I think it was second grade. We had a drawing contest and I wanted to win so badly. I wanted the prize that the teacher was going to give. So uh, what did I, I do? I would uh, take other um, comic books or I would take other drawings and I would trace them. And uh, I would uh, tell all my friends, oh yeah, I, look what I drew. I didn't actually drew, draw them though, I traced them. I tried taking credit for someone else's uh, work. Joseph does the opposite. He's not going to take credit for what God is going to do uh, through him, because without God working through him, he wasn't—he wouldn't be able to do what he is about to do. But he interprets these dreams for Pharaoh. They are meaning that he—they're a warning of what is to come. What is coming is a famine, a seven-year famine. But before that, there is going to be seven years of. Uh, plenty, which means they're going to have more than what they, they need. So because of this, because of the interpretation, Pharaoh in, assigns Joseph to uh, be in charge of the land. So uh, being wise, Joseph starts putting aside food for that, that time of uh, the, those seven years of plenty. He starts putting aside things that they're going to need when the famine comes. When the famine comes, they're not going to have anything that they can pull from those, uh, those harvests. They're not going to have a harvest. So being uh, wise and being prepared, he starts putting aside things that is going to help them for those second half of, uh, of what the dream is talking about. He gives, uh, he gives credit to where it is due. Let's look further into it, this story. So we know Joseph ended up in Egypt because his brothers sold him. They were so angry at him. They disliked him so much that at first they were going to kill him. But remember, they decided not to do it. One of his brothers stood up for him and they're like, this is not a good idea. Let's do this other bad idea instead because it won't reflect that bad upon us. So they sell him. He winds up in Egypt. Now the famine spreads so far, he even hits the land that his family is in. And because of that, they are in need of food. So they go down to, to Egypt to, to buy food. And it, the person they're going to see is the Pharaoh. Now, Joseph is working for the Pharaoh. So let's see what happens at that point. So we're going to uh, skip ahead a little bit and we are going to uh, go to uh, ver uh, chapter 42. Um, 42 and we're going to start in chapter 3. It says that then at 10 of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain from Egypt. But Jacob, 
did not send Benjamin, Joseph's uh, brother, um, uh, with the others because he was afraid that he that harm might come to him. Verse six. Now Joseph was the governor of the land, the one who sold grain to all his people. So Joseph's brother. So when Joseph's brothers arrived, they bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. As soon as Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them, but he pretended to be a stranger and spoke harshly to them. So he knows exactly who they are. He, he can recognize them. They, in turn, can't, do not recognize who uh, Joseph is. They don't recognize them as their, their brother. And so now Joseph has a a choice to to make and he decides that he is going to test his brothers to see if they if they changed maybe if they changed he might help them out a little bit so go ahead go ahead and um, we're gonna jump ahead a little bit going to verse 18 um, verse 18 says that this on the third day Joseph said to them do this and you will live, for I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of it, your brothers stay here in prison while the rest of you go and take grain back to your starving household. So he is asking them to do this to prove that you, um, you have changed. So I'm going to help you at that point. He hears their brothers discussing what is, uh, has happened. Some of them are, are saying this is happening to us because of what we have done in the past to our, our brother. They still don't know who it, Joseph is, who this man um, in charge of uh, selling them things is. Joseph overhears what they're, they are talking about and he, uh, and he learns that they are deeply and, and truly sorry for the actions that they um, had years ago. Um, so he, in turn, it takes uh, their, their possessions and he gives back to them what he, he had taken. He gives them their, their silver back. He gives them food for their, their family. He sends them back home to, uh, to provide for their, their father and their, their other brother. They end up making a second journey to, uh, to, to Egypt where they find out who uh, this person uh, truly is, who, uh, who Joseph is. And uh, they, are, they are then reunited. Now, Joseph started off in a terrible situation, being sold by his own family, being uh, thrown in prison. He was in a, a bad spot, but God will use bad situations or what seem like bad situations in our life for his, uh, his good. The bad situation brought Joseph to, to Egypt, but while he was in Egypt, God was able to uh, use him for greater good of eventually. God is able to do that in our lives as well. Some of us may have uh, might be going through hard times right now. Some of you may have gone through hard times in in the past. But always uh, always remember that no matter how difficult a situation might seem or how it difficult something that, that you are going through, how much it impacts your life, always always remember that God is always in control and he will be able to uh, use uh, situations in your life later on for his his glory and for his good i know many times in in my life i've been i've gone through uh, trials but now those uh, those trials that i had gone through in the past i'm able to use them for uh, for good maybe i can relate better with uh, someone who's gone through the same thing and I could uh, sympathize with them a little bit more. Maybe I'm able to give them advice. Think about things in uh, your life that you've gone through 
that maybe some of your friends might one day go through or some of them are going through right now. Think of ways that you can help them. Think of how God is able to use you and how he wants to use you in even when things seem like they are hard and impossible to to make it through. God is in control. God always has a plan for your guys' life, just like he had a plan for Joseph's life. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, I just uh, just thank you for this, uh, this reminder. Thank you for the fact that even though bad things uh, happen in our lives, you are able to uh, use them for, for your glory and for your good uh, eventually. Even in those times where we can't see um, it, when it is going, when we're going through those hard times, you're able to uh, to use us uh, mightily in in those times. And so I just thank you for that, and just ask that you just be with us as we go throughout the rest of this uh, week um, in our small groups, just allowing good uh, conversations. Pray this in your name. Amen. Thank you, guys. See you later. Hey everybody, that was week nine. I hope you paid attention. I hope you listened well. I hope you'll answer all the questions in your small group time here in a moment and be able to say your memory verse. We'll see you next week for the last week of up. Week 10, the last week. See you next week. Take care. Bye.